Ruby's fights and their quality has been a big talking point within the community since Volume 1, and while I've discussed those fights up till Volume 5, Volume 6 offers plenty of cool new action to talk about, so I think it's high time we go over Volume 6's combat, just like how I've done before. Like the previous video, I'm going to be going through all the fights in Volume 6 and giving them a score. That way we can see how many encounters there are and how well they all stand up in terms of quality of animation and choreography. My scoring system works on a scale from one quarter of a point to two points. A fight that scores a one is the average standard of the show. Each fight should strive to at least score a one. Lower than that are disappointing or unimpressive in some way, while higher scores exceed expectations. Now, honestly, I'd recommend watching my previous fights video first. That way you can get a rundown on how all the previous volumes hold up. But here's where the combat from volumes 1 to 5 stand. Volume 3's obviously got the most fights and highest score, while volumes 4 and 5 really fell apart in their scoring, having a lot of pretty disappointing encounters. But that's enough dilly-dallying. Let's jump into volume 6. Everyone vs. Manticores. One quarter. Basically a glorified cast list with awkward floaty physics. Crow, D, and Dudley versus Manticores and Sphinx. One quarter. Crow using his scythe is exciting, but the encounter is mostly just talking. The dilemma with the turrets feels contrived. Ruby, Crow, and Oscar versus Manticores and Sphinx. One. Interesting setting is unfortunately never utilized. Watching the team work together is fun despite the overall uninteresting choreography. Cinder vs. Neo. One and a quarter. Fast and exciting display of ability. The long winded interruption ruins the flow of the battle, and choreography gets worse once Cinder starts using her swords. Maria vs. Talk and her bandits. 1. Fun watching Maria have to put effort into blocking bullets. Disappointing that cool gravity dust tactics were reserved for the Nevermore exclusively. Blake vs. Adam. 1 quarter. A glorified talking scene. Too close camera and hyper fast movement of the characters makes action hard to follow. Adam's teleporting is immersion breaking. Everyone vs. Cordovan. 3 quarters. Features some pretty goofy animation and disappointing lack of tactics. No one's taking the fight seriously, which gives it no stakes. A lot of fun character interactions unfortunately means there's also a lot of chatter. Blake vs. Adam. 1 half. The cool choreography is hard to follow with the camera pushed in so close. Very short with a lot of talking. Yang vs. Adam. 1 and a quarter. Fast without getting confusing. Very cool moves used by both parties and great animation. Tiny semblance explanation is kinda lame, breaking the flow of the fight. Blake and Yang vs. Adam. Three quarters. Fun teamwork is over too quickly wherein it becomes too much of Yang watching Blake climb. The effects of Adam and Yang's attacks are the best part of the encounter. Ten fights, seven and a quarter points. A commenter by the name of Shadow Saber Baraxio, I hope I pronounced that right, had this really cool idea where they divided each volume score by the number of fights to give them a percentage. I think that's great, so I've decided to add that statistic to my chart. You're a cool person for coming up with that, Shadow Saber Baraxio. Looking at the percentages, Volumes 4 and 5 really underperformed, which makes it exciting that Volume 6 did so much better. They seem to finally be getting a solid footing on combat again, and I hope they can continue to get better in subsequent volumes. So yeah, Volume 6 had a pretty good amount of combat. They tend to be clustered at the first episode and finale, but there are also plenty of small combat pieces sprinkled throughout. Unfortunately, it does seem to be a bit of quantity over quality, though. Most of the fights scored below 1, which is a bit of a shame. A minor but common problem I found with the fights this volume is the underutilized settings. They have the tendency to just stick the characters in a big open clearing and then have them tussle. Even on the train, they're just stuck on the flat open area on top without exploring how to use the environment interestingly. The most interesting they get with this is when they fight the mech, but even then half the cast are stuck on shore, shooting flaccidly at Cordo, and those who do venture out onto the water don't try anything outside of stab the hull or shoot the big weak spot. I'd really like to see the choreographers and animators play around with how the world the kids exist in can change the way they fight in future volumes. Something I discovered in my previous video was Rooster Teeth's habit of having all the build-up to encounter just to cut away from it. I call these not-quite fights. Last time I discussed the fights, Volume 5 had the most not-quites with 20 out of a total of 28. So let's take a look at all the not quite fights of Volume 6 real quick. The brothers arguing. People shooting their weapons at the brothers. Ozma 2 kills a Beowulf. Ozma 2 and Salem tussle off screen. Running from the apathy. Maria stomps the Nevermore. Emerald and Mercury get mad while dropping lore on us. Cordovan fires a warning shot. Ruby thinks about stuff in front of the Leviathan while her friends just watch until Cordovan stabs it once. That's nine not-quites for the volume. Certainly more than volumes one through four, but also nowhere near the 20 of volume five. I'll also point out that they weren't nearly as aggravating as they were the previous volume. 
In Volume 5, the majority of the Not Quite fights were during the finale, where we just spent a bunch of time setting up the fights without getting to see them. In comparison for Volume 6, most of the Not Quites are in Episode 3, where Jin tells us Salem's backstory. The episode's already packed full of new information, character development, and important lore that I don't get upset that we're missing out on all this combat. The episode offers us enough in terms of story and entertainment that it doesn't feel like we're being cheated out of the combat like how it had felt with Volume 5. I also want to mention that not quites aren't inherently a bad thing, and a perfect example of that is the not quite fight of the girls running from the apathy. This sequence is my favorite part of the whole show so far. It may not be a fight, but it is still action. Ruby is an action anime, not a fighting anime, which means these characters get to partake in events that don't include swinging their weapons around, but are still moments of high-intensity action. Their landing in the forest back in Volume 1 is another good example of that, where the goal isn't to win against a bad guy, but to instead use their arsenal of abilities to succeed at a task. Volume 6 does a good job supplying action sequences in place of outright combat. Ruby shooting down the barrel of Cordovan's mech is not a fight and doesn't pretend to be one, but it is still an exciting moment of action. Same with dealing with the Leviathan. Fights are fun, but they're not the only way to put some stakes into an action anime, and I'm glad to see RT balancing that pretty well throughout the volume. Volume 6 definitely has its flaws, but in regards to the fights, I'm glad to say they hold up pretty well. Animation is fluid and featured some pretty creative choreography. It's not quite at the same level as some of the earlier volumes, but the fights of Volume 6 managed to get my heart racing again, something that had been missing for the last two volumes. Hopefully this is a sign that the combat of Ruby will continue to improve as the show charges forward.